Hey, I'm Frank Roar, President and Chief Scientist for Delta Waterfowl. And what we're going to do today is talk about the pintail problem. And the pintail problem is pretty obvious. We have these very restrictive regulations of, of one pintail a day for a duck that's reasonably abundant. But let me go backwards and let's talk about pintail biology a little bit and then we'll talk about the comprehensive research we're doing. If we go back to the 1970s, pintails were really very abundant. Populations fluctuated between five and six million. Now, the 70s were a wet period here on the prairie, so we had a lot of water. Pintails were doing great. The drought of the 1980s hit. That's the last, last long-term drought we've had. And lots of ducks declined. Pintails declined dramatically, but mallards reached record lows, so lots of prairie ducks declined, okay? And then it gets wet in 1994, and we have this long series of, of wet years. And most ducks recovered. But pintails did not recover like other ducks. So what happened with pintails? Well, two things. It's about the wetlands and it's about the uplands. Okay, pintails, the center of their range is in the dry prairies, the short grass prairies. So Saskatchewan, Eastern Alberta. And in that region, we've seen two big problems. One, wetland drainage has continued without abatement. So in the last 30 years, we haven't even slowed wetland drainage. That's bad, but what's particularly bad is that the easiest ponds to drain, these shallow ponds, seasonals and temporaries that pintails just love, are the ones that get drained the most. So pintails have seen the worst problem with drainage, okay? So we've lost wetlands, but another huge problem for pintails was a change in agriculture. Okay, so I'm standing in a field that was wheat last summer, okay? And in the old days, a farmer would cut the wheat, right? And then he'd till the stubble, and so you'd get a field that was black dirt. But this field, when the pintails returned in the spring, had stubble in it about that high, right? Now, pintails, because they're western ducks, short grass prairie, they view short grass as perfectly adequate nesting cover. So pintails would come into the prairies after the 1980s and that agricultural revolution and they'd nest in the stubble. Stubble is left so that it will hold the snow and, and increase soil moisture, but what that creates is what we call an ecological trap. So pintails would come out here and nest in this field, okay? And they'd have poor nest success, get, get their first nest destroyed, but they go right back and re-nest in the same field. And let's say a female found a site that was safe. Well, the problem is John Deere is super efficient, covers the entire field and scrambles the eggs. So, so pintails have seen a real reduction in, in nest success in productivity because they nest in stubble. So that's the problem. Delta's research is about looking at all these aspects of pintail biology. So we have a great biologist, Dave Coons, who's looking at the air ground transects. These are the 150 mile long transects we fly throughout the US and Canada. And he's looking at each one of those to look at how have pintail numbers changed, and in particular relating that to the wetlands and the uplands, the, the amount of stubble, the amount of grass in areas with lots of grass because of grazing or, or uh, planted cover, we should see more pintails. So, so we're looking at the carrying capacity of the habitat with Dave Kuhn we're looking at changes in uh, productivity. So Todd Arnold at the University of Minnesota is looking at age ratios. We're documenting that pintails are not producing like they should, um, and that's changes in age ratios. We're looking at sex ratios. We've seen a change in pintail sex ratios through time. So we go to banding stations, get data on, on the ages and sexes of what we're banding, and we're seeing a skew towards more uh, uh, more males. And so females take the brunt of reproduction. They're the ones that suffer mortality from predators by being on the nest. And so we're seeing age ratios skew. We've had this fabulous uh, bright young guy named Thomas Reiki, a postdoc, looking at how do skewed sex ratios affect production. And it's, it's not just uh, that excess males are irrelevant. Excess males are actually harmful. So you have a skewed sex ratio, and as we skew it more towards males, uh, we're seeing poorer female reproduction. And that's 
probably because on the prairies, when you watch what happens, those extra males are chasing females around. So we're seeing a lot of horse copulation flights. And females expend a huge amount of energy and time trying to get away from these excess males. So, and finally, our last part, our fifth part in this, in this research program, is to look at harvest rates and survival rates. Right? So we want to know, does, does harvesting females or, or pintails affect their survival rate? So we look at from banding data and we get harvest and survival. And we're largely finding those to be independent. So harvest rates don't really affect survival rates uh, much or at all. And that's uh, more work by Todd Arnold. So we're taking this entire set of, of research that we're doing on pintails, this very comprehensive program. And we're going to go to the Fish and Wildlife Service and propose, let's treat pintails more like mallards. We have differential um, uh, regulations for mallards, right? You can obviously shoot more male mallards than females. We think we should try the same thing with pintails. So maybe up to November 1st, only one pintail. But after November uh, comes around and, and you can easily tell males from females, let's, let's have a pintail regulation where you can shoot three pintails. Now only one can be a female, right? We don't want to change harvest rates for females, but let's allow hunters the opportunity and uh, the experience of shooting three males, and let's see if that can help us skew the sex ratio back towards females. So we want to go to the Fish and Wildlife Service and propose this new set of regulations. We think they make a lot of sense. It allows hunters the opportunity to harvest excess males, and we think that could skew the sex ratio back towards a more even sex ratio and benefit females so each female would have greater reproductive output. So that's the pintail program.